Hi, I'm Angela and I'm here with Yeg Film and I am speaking with Randy Borowski. Randy, how are you? I'm good. I'm really good. I had a very good piece of news today. And what would that be? Uh, I'm one of the 15 uh, finalists for the first round of Story Hive, so I just got a $10,000 grant to produce the first episode of my web series. Congratulations! Thank you. When does that start? When are you going to start filming? Uh, uh, well, there's this wonderful little feature. They, they give you three months to shoot. And uh, one pilot episode of a web series, three months should be lots of time. But there's a crew in Edmonton that is shooting a feature film right in the middle of those three months, taking up a month of it. So we're going to camera January 3rd and 4th. Happy New Year. Great. <laughs> Wow, this should be exciting for you though, because um, sometimes I know funding could be a little bit tough to get. Oh. So, yeah, it's it's always that that first step, and that's what's that's what's so great. And this is not a sponsor message paid for by Telus at all. That's what's so great about the Story Hive thing is it's it's seed money. It's not enough to say here's enough to go do whatever you want, but when you're starting from effectively zero. I don't have Brad Pitt in it. I'm not Spielberg. How do I get money for a web series which may or may not ever turn into revenue? Yeah. How do you get it just started? And the Story Hive thing is, a, is an excellent way to do that because it's enough to give you that first kick. It's a big enough group of participants that you're not just being selective and showing favoritism. It, it's going to allow a real diverse group of projects to come up. And it's, yeah, it's sort of that boost you need to get the ball rolling. Sweet. Can you tell us about your project then? The project is called Necessary Evil. Um, if Joss Whedon watched Supernatural and decided to do his own version of The Office, okay. it would probably be better than this. So I hope he doesn't do that. But that's the general tone I'm going for. A uh, low-level demon in the cubicle seas of corporate hell gets called up to the top office where he finds out he's actually... Uh, Lucifer has resigned and has actually promoted our hero to be CEO of hell. So now he's got brand new powerful jealous enemies who didn't even know he existed five minutes ago. Uh, office politics to deal with and a problem to solve that could threaten the very fabric of the underworld. Okay. No pressure. Oh. Yeah. No. Um, so what's with the title, Necessary Evil? Uh, well, without giving away too much because it's it's the necessary, the, the fact that evil in the story world of, of this project is a necessary thing. It serves a very important function. And it's not just the yin and the yang, the good must have the bad. There's a reason it exists, okay. uh, which is where the phrase necessary evil came from. And it's something I've been toying with since. I've been toying with this idea for about 10 years because I did a fringe show called, um, sort of on the other side of the coin, called God and Unauthorized Biography. That, that was more than 10 years ago, but we're just going to say 10 years for now. Um, and so I, I wanted to do the other side of that and this whole reason for evil and the whole um, theological, uh, the problem of evil, right? Why, how can an omnipotent God have evil in the world and not do anything about it? I've been toying with that for a while, and I went, oh, what if, ding, and built the whole story world around that concept. Yes. Wow, that's very interesting. And um, a little bird told me that you'll be on 6.30 chat tomorrow. Yep. What time? 2.30. Okay. 2.30? Yep. Not in the morning, thank God. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. You can tell you're popular when the media says, can we do an interview with you at 2.30 a.m.? Because we don't want anyone to hear it, and I've got some hours to kill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for talking with us, Randy. Thank you. Thank you for talking with me. That was my pleasure.